So for the past 15 years, we've been learning, saving, and growing to retire early and to be financially independent. This year, we finally did it at the ages of 35 and 38. In this video, we're gonna break down the top 12 holdings in our million dollar stock portfolio with you. Hey guys, it's Amber and Jared here from Holy City Family. Our goal here is to empower you to achieve financial independence and to provide the best education to your children so that everyone can pursue their dreams and ambitions. If it's your first time here, thank you for joining us. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell below to receive our weekly videos. Okay, here are our top 12 holdings. So the first one that we're gonna talk about is Trex. You've ever seen a deck that wasn't made of wood? It probably was made of Trex. Their earnings are forecast to grow 18.81% per year. And over the past five years, those earnings have grown 21.7%. And if you take a look at the Snowflake model on the right-hand side by Simply Wall Street, you can see that the health is outstanding for Trex and the future growth. The value, not so great right now. And it also does not offer a dividend, which is common with growth stocks like this. So the share price currently on October 19th, 2021 is around $97 for Trex. And over the past year, they've seen about a 25% return on that investment. Okay, so let's talk about the pros and cons. And before I go into this one, I just wanted to set the stage for how we're gonna do this for each of the holdings. Uh, we're gonna look at different aspects of the company. And as we go through them, I'll tell you what, what people typically would look for, what the averages are. So to start off with, uh, we wanna look at the economic moat for all the different companies that we look at on our watch list and to, to determine if they're gonna be in our top holdings or not. The options for that, uh, according to Morningstar, are no moat, there's a narrow moat, or a wide economic moat. For Trex, for example, they have a wide economic moat, and then for the five-year growth or long-term growth, the average for the S&P 500 is about 10%. And for Trex, it's 18% per year. For the debt to equity ratio, that's something that we look at for in our watch list and for our top holdings. According to Warren Buffett, you typically want that to be at 40% or less. And in this case, Trex is at 14%, so that's great. And that means that the company is more durable to ha handle some kind of economic fallout uh, pandemic like we just had or are still in. They're just more durable and they have the ability to overcome that and they don't have to take on a lot of debt to get through the hard times. For Trex specifically, uh, we have a lot of personal experience with this. We've actually installed the product. We've used the product at a couple of our different houses and I've also worked at Lowe's Home Improvement. Uh, my dad has worked there. And now for the cons. It's hard to buy on sale and then there's a, a forward 60 price to earnings ratio. So just a frame of reference, when we say it's hard to buy it on sale, we mean what we look for and what we've learned from Warren Buffett is he'd like to have a 40% discount from the fair value of the stock. Mm -hmm. And in the case of Trex, it just doesn't happen that often. Uh, I actually have not seen it happen yet since we've been looking at it, but we do tend to add to our position when there's a big drop, like a 20% drop or so. And if it ever does hit our margin of safety numbers, we'll be we'll be loading up even more. And as far as the, the forward PE ratio that we mentioned, the target there is to have it at 15% or less. And in the case of Trex, it's at 60. So that is a con that we look at for adding to this position right now. Alphabet Inc. provides online advertising services in the US, Europe, the Middle East, Africa, the Asia Pacific, Canada, and Latin America. Its earnings are forecast to grow 12.66% per year, and then its earnings grew by 99.6% over the past year. And as far as the snowflake analysis from Simply Wall Street, uh, it looks like Alphabet is very strong in the financial health section, the past performance, and it's kind of averaged on future and value, and it also does not offer a dividend. The price is $2,865, and over the past year, it's seen an 80, around an 86% return. Let's talk about the pros. Wide economic moat, 20% per year for long-term growth, 12% debt to equity ratio, so that's really good. And over the last five years, the return has been 251%. Uh, this is a company that um, I'm sure a lot of the viewers and us are familiar with. I think just about everybody's been to google.com and we've used Google, used their products. Um, so that's nice though. We've we've personally used the products. We have a lot mm -hmm. of fam familiarity with it. And we also like that they have a wide variety of products and services. So there's diversity even just within this one company. Um, as far as the cons, we were really trying to kind of struggling to come up with what the cons would be. Aside from just the value factor, the fact that it's hard to buy that within a margin of safety. And like we said, we target 40% margin of safety, give or take, depending on the company. And it's just been hard to buy this one at a discount. 
Okay, so the next one is Adobe, and Adobe Inc. operates as a diversified software company worldwide. Its earnings are forecasted to grow 13.09% per year, and its earnings grew by 47.7% over the past year. Now, if you look at the Snowflake analysis from Simply Wall Street, you can see that they have very strong on the health side and also past performance. Kind of average for future growth. There's no dividend and pretty low on the value side as well. So the share price with Adobe is around $636 per share. And then again, if you look at the year, the return on the investment for the year, it's around 25%. Okay, the pros for Adobe. Again, a wide economic moat, 18% long-term growth, 33% debt to equity ratio, over 2,000% 10-year return. Uh, for this one, similar to, similar to Google, we've used a lot of their products. Mm -hmm. We've used them over a long period of time. Some of these that come to mind, probably for you guys, are Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, Flash. Fireworks. Fireworks, which I used <laughs> to use. And now for the cons. It's got a forward 44 PE ratio, it's got future competitors, and then it's less diverse than some of our other top holdings. So next we have Salesforce. They develop enterprise cloud computing solutions with a focus on customer relationship. Its earnings are forecasted to grow 27.88% per year. And if you look at the Snowflake analysis, you can see once again that the health, the financial health of the company is very strong. Future growth also looks really good. Value is a little below average, and I'd say past performance is, mm -hmm. is on the weak side. This also does not offer a dividend, so that's why that's low on the Snowflake. So the share price for sales, Salesforce is around $292, and then over the year it's a 14.39% return. Let's talk about the pros for Salesforce. A wide economic moat, a 21% per year uh, long-term growth, 28% debt to equity ratio, a 791% 10 year return. I've also used it, I've personally used the CRM software um, at work and in business over the last 15 years. And I know that a lot of major Fortune 500 companies use their software and, and other services that they offer. I've even had to sell against Salesforce for a software that my company was working on, also competed against them in the nonprofit space. So I can tell you that they're, they're pretty tough mm -hmm. and their software is pretty good. And so for the cons, it has a forward PE ratio of 62. There are future competitors for it, and there's lots of other CRM systems, like you said, in the market. And their software actually appeals to those large corporations, but it's too rigid and complex for those small and medium-sized companies. So the next one we have here is Amazon. And we all know Amazon.com engages in the retail sale of consumer products and subscriptions in North America and internationally. Earnings are forecast to grow 28.66% per year, and uh, its earnings grew by 123.4% over the past year. And if you look at the Snowflake analysis, you can see that Amazon is looking strong in financial health for past performance and future performance. Um, a little low on the value side, and it does also, also does not offer a dividend. So with Amazon, its share price is around $3,442. And over the year, it's about a 7.447% uh, return. As far as pros for Amazon.com, this one has a wide economic moat, a 30% long-term growth, a 1,350% 10-year return. Especially ever since the pandemic, we've just gradually uh, bought more and more up to probably about 95% of our products now mm -hmm. on Amazon. So we use this, uh, use their services a lot. We have Amazon Prime. We you know, use their streaming service, all those things. So we're very familiar with their product, as I'm sure a lot of the viewers are at home. One of the other things that we found is um, their customer service is top notch, just so incredibly yeah. easy to work with compared to like a Target or a Walmart or some big box retailer. Another pro for Amazon is that it's a diversified company within itself. You know, it doesn't, it's not just Amazon.com. It mm -hmm. has um, AWS Cloud, it has Amazon right. Prime. And so for the cons, it has a forward PE ratio of around 60, 107% debt to equity ratio, which is different than the other ones that we've mentioned before. And then it has those future competitors. So now we have Berkshire Hathaway, and they, through its subsidiaries, engages in the insurance, freight, rail, transportation, and utility business worldwide. Its earnings grew by 375.8% over the past year. And if you look at the Snowflake analysis, you can see that the financial health and the past performance look really strong, but it's definitely lacking. <laughs> doesn't pay a dividend. I don't think it's ever going to pay a dividend per Warren Buffett. Also, the value is pretty, pretty slim and future growth also looks pretty low. So for the share price of Berkshire Hathaway, it's around $284 a share. 
And over the past year, it's seen around a 35% return. So here are the pros for Berkshire Hathaway. Wide economic moat, similar to the other companies that we've talked about. 24% debt to equity ratio, so that's really good. A 278% 10 year return. A 23 forward PE ratio, which is really good. Fairly valued and below intrinsic value based on our calculations mm -hmm. and the fair value from Thinbox. Um, the company is also led by Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, two of the greatest investors of all time. And the company itself is well diversified. It has 100% ownership in a multitude of companies. I think I saw there's like 1,500 different companies that Berkshire Hathaway owns. And these are companies like Geico, Shaw, Fruit of the Loom, ton of other companies as well. So they own those companies outright. And then they have part ownership in companies like Apple, Bank of America, Coca-Cola, and I, th I think it's like around 60 companies uh, that they have part ownership of. That's amazing. And for the cons, so we're looking at the people who are the head of the company. You got Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, and Warren Buffett is 91 years old, and Charlie Munger is 97. So the future of that is just kind of a little unknown with their just their age. So we're not really sure about future leadership after right. the reign of you know Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. So the next one is Microsoft and Microsoft Corporation develops, licenses and supports software, services, devices and solutions worldwide. Its earnings are forecast to grow 9.33% per year and its earnings grew by 38.4% over the past year. And as for the snowflake analysis, you can see that this one looks pretty well rounded compared to the others that we've looked at. Definitely strong on the health, the past performance and it this one this <laughs> rare holding in our portfolio actually offers a dividend and then for value and future i'd say those are on the lower side but they're still you know more green than than the previous holdings that we've looked at so the share price for microsoft it's around 308 dollars a share and then over the year it's seen about a 43.4 percent return so let's look at the pros for Microsoft. They have a wide economic moat. They have a 1,262% 10 year return, which is always nice. They were founded by Bill Gates. So you have a reputable founder that has a lot of experience. Also you have for Windows, I'm sure we're, most of us are familiar with Windows. They have the operating system that's on just about every PC out there. They've got Office 365. They've got Azure Cloud coming on strong. If you think about gaming, they've got Xbox. They bought LinkedIn. They've got artificial intelligence, robotics, and cybersecurity. And now for the cons. So they have the threat of future competitors. In our opinion, some of the software is outdated. And then they're an anti-monopoly. So here we have Disney. And the Walt Disney Company, together with its subsidiaries, operates as an entertainment company worldwide. Their earnings are forecast to grow 32.2%. This one became profitable this year. And for the snowflake analysis, you can see that it looks the strongest on the future growth and value. It doesn't offer a dividend and it's a little weak on the health, okay. on the uh, financial health and past performance. So for the share price for Walt Disney Company, it's around $171 a share. And then over the last year, it's seen about a 37% return. Here are some of the pros for Disney. They also have a wide economic moat. Their 10-year return is 519%. Their long-term growth rate is 33% per year. And some of the other things that we like about, about Disney is that they own Star Wars, Marvel, and all the Disney theme parks. They just launched Disney Plus over the last couple of years, which we and, and our <laughs> kids watch. Um, and they have a lot of great series and original content that they're providing too. Right. Countless successful movies right. over the years and not to mention Avatar, the top grossing movie ever. And I believe Avatar 2 is coming out maybe this year. And then I think I think Avatar 3 is coming out either the next either next year or the year after that. The cons for Disney, it's got a forward PE ratio of 70. It does have a threat for future competitors. The park and movie theaters are vulnerable to pandemics like we saw in the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. And then there's the growing number of streaming services, services because of the pandemic, I think really create a competition for them. Yeah. So the next stock that we have on in our portfolio is Intuit. And Intuit provides financial management and compliance products and services for consumers, small businesses, self-employed and accounting professionals, both in the US, Canada and internationally. Its earnings are forecast to grow 11.74% per year. Over the past five years, their earnings have grown 18.3%. On the Snowflake analysis, you can see that they're, they look very strong on the financial health side of things and also in future and past growth kind of average. Low on the value side and no dividend. So 
So for the share price for Intuit, it's around $572 a share. And then over the past year, it's seen about a 68% return. Let's go through some of the pros for Intuit. They have a wide economic moat, 1,102% 10-year return. They have a 25% debt to equity ratio, a 15% long-term growth return. And for this one, we've personally used these products similar to the other. We've used the products such as Mint, TurboTax, Credit Karma, and QuickBooks. Now the cons for Intuit, it has a forward PE ratio of 46. It does again have the threat for future competitors and it is less diversified than our other top holdings. So now we have Nvidia and they operate as a visual computing company worldwide. Their earnings are forecast to grow 14.11% per year, and then their earnings grew by 107% over the past year. And if you look at the Snowflake analysis, you can see that they look strong in the past performance and financial health, and then also pretty good in the future growth. However, not so great in the value, and they also do not provide a dividend. <laughs> The share price for NVIDIA is around $222 per share. Over the past year, it's seen about a 64% return. Here are some of the pros for NVIDIA. They have a narrow economic moat. For the 10 year return, they have a whopping 6,310%, which I believe is the highest for any of our holdings. Also for long-term growth rate, they have a 29%, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Also, we've used their graphics cards in our video editing computer and in previous computers, and we can tell that looking in the market, we can tell that NVIDIA seriously dominates mm -hmm. that area. Some of the growth drivers that NVIDIA has right now are in gaming, artificial intelligence, 3D design, and self-driving cars. Now for the cons of NVIDIA, it has a forward PE ratio of 47. AMD and Intel are kind of its current competitors, and there are there is a threat of even more future competitors for them. It's less diversified, again, than any of our other top holdings and companies like A Apple, Alibaba, and Microsoft are actually starting to make their own chips. Now for Tencent, Tencent Holdings Limited is an investment holding company and it provides value added services and online advertising services in mainland China and internationally. Its earnings are forecast to grow 11.28% per year and its earnings grew by over 81% in the past year. Now for the Snowflake analysis, they look pretty strong in the financial health section, the past performance, no dividend, and looking kind of weak in the value side and in the future growth. Now for Tencent, their share price is around $65 per share. And over the past year, they've seen a loss of around 10%. Here are some of the pros for Tencent. They have a wide economic moat. Their 10-year return is 1,323%. Their five-year growth is 20%. Their forward PE ratio is 27%. Their debt to equity ratio is 35%. Overall, it's a very diversified company, one of the largest in China. They have brands like Tencent Games, WeBank, WeChat, TenPay, Tencent Cloud, and they also have investments in companies like Tesla, DD, JD.com, Snapchat, and several others. And for the cons, here we're looking at the risk of delisting on the U.S. stock market, China politics and regulation concerns. You know, one tip on this I was thinking about with the risk of uh, delisting in the U.S. stock market is that we've decided to buy positions in the Hong Kong Stock Exchange and in the U.S. stock market to kind of offset that risk for us. So here we have Alibaba. And Alibaba Group Holding Limited, through its subsidiaries, provides technology infrastructure and marketing reach to merchants, brands, retailers, and other businesses. Customers in the People's Republic of China and internationally. And its earnings are forecast to grow 13.48% per year. As for the Snowflake analysis, you can see that their financial health looks very strong, also pretty strong on the value side of things. There's no dividend, a little on the low side for future growth and past growth as well. So the share price for Alibaba is um, $177. With Wall Street Zen, they, they shared that Alibaba shares are actually trading higher after the company confirmed plans to develop an in-house processor that would be used to to power its cloud computing businesses. With the return, we've seen actually a loss within the past year of around 45%. Here are the pros for Alibaba. They have a wide economic moat, a 19% debt to equity ratio, which is nice, a very low uh, 14 forward PE ratio, and overall it's just a great value, and this does meet our full criteria for the margin of safety, of the 40% margin of safety. So we've been adding and adding to our position where I think we're full at this point, uh, but we'll see. But like with the others, there are some cons. It does have a risk of delisting on the US stock market, again, like Tencent. The China politics and the regulation concerns are always a big one, and then there is competition like JD.com. 
Yeah, and similar to what we said about Tencent, we've also been buying this both on the U.S. market and in the Hong Kong market to offset that risk of delisting in the U.S. Now that we've gone through our breakdown of our top 12 holdings and our million dollar portfolio, we hope this gives you guys some ideas for your investments and also explains our pros and cons for why we decided to invest in mm -hmm. these companies. We're also going to do more in-depth stock analysis for every stock in our portfolio, so stay tuned for those updates. Right. And in the comments below, you're going to see that we've linked our Tesla and Alibaba videos that we've already done analysis for, so make sure to check those out too. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and reach out to us in the comments below. You can also email us and follow us on Instagram. And again, our goal is to read every single comment and respond as often as we can. So make sure to subscribe to our channel and join us as we learn, save, and grow together. Thanks, guys. See you soon. All of our videos are for informational purposes only and do not constitute financial advice. Please do your own research. Consult a certified and trusted financial planner who will put your interests above their own before following any advice we may offer. Oh, I have something to say. No, it's already starting? Yeah. Okay. So, for the cons, no. <laughs> <laughs> so some, oh, no. Now go. That we just talked about and other... Mm.